Hey guys, and now for something slightly different, again, I wanted to talk about a type of engine configuration that's always fascinated me, the ill-fated, some might say ambitious yet rubbish, H16 engine produced by BRM in the 1960s. So if we take a conventional cylinder engine arrangement like a V8 for example, the arrangement uh, is you have two banks of pistons and cylinders arranged in this case in a V configuration. So how did the H16 come about? Well, by illustrating, I'll explain. So in order for an H16 engine to be created, they first needed two of their 1500cc V8 engines from the previous year, 1965. In 1966, for context, the cubic capacity of the engines had been increased from 1500 to 3000 cc. So, how did BRM use this in order to create their, H, their infamous H16 engine. So in order to emphasize the difference that they differences that they made, I should say, I'll use different colors. So for the red, I'll emphasize the first difference that they did. So what they did for the first part was flatten out, as you can see here, they flattened out the V angle of their original 1500cc V8. So that's the first part, but what did they do for the next part? Well, what they did was this. They put two of them, one above the other. And in order to complete the H configuration, they needed to find a way to sync the two engines together to make one. So there you have it. That's how the RM made their H16. But that's overly simplified because the engine needed everything to be synchronized. So with that in mind, <coughs> switching back to the black pen now, they needed the valves to open, they needed the cranks to be in sync, and they needed to have a sufficient amount of camshafts in order to allow the valves to open and close. So, what they planned to do was to have six camshafts between the four cylinder heads and as you can see the two cranks being directly linked. However, that's not what actually happened. What actually happened was this. It instead had eight camshafts, four per side, or bank, if you will, two, four for the upper, four for the upper bank, four for the lower bank, and the two cranks were chain linked. And if we include the shape of the engine block, block, 
and you have one enormous engine block. So that, as you can see, is what BRM came up with in a crude sort of way, I don't know. But anyway, you're bound to ask, why did BRM come up with this hefty engine? See about here for just how heavy it actually was and the figures that it came out with. But anyway, the idea behind this and also the idea behind the uh, cubic capacity increase from 1500 cc to 3000 cc was to increase the power produced by the cars in the 1960s because there was a general consensus that the 1500 cc normally aspirated cars were quite slow relatively speaking i digress but the idea was for this to produce in excess of 400 brake horsepower which it did just but with all the other things like the amount of camshafts it had the linking up of the two cranks and the sheer hefty weight of the block itself meant that it was a very heavy engine so the power to weight ratio was hmm, debatable as to how good it actually was and it turned out not very because not even BRM could score a race victory with this engine that would fall upon Jim Clark yes that's right I'm mentioning him again Jim Clark his Lotus 43 powered by this engine the 43, the 43 was powered by the P75H16 engine. Scored its one and only victory in the US Grand Prix of 1966. And only a driver of Jim Clark's fast yet mechanically sympathetic driving style could have got this uh, hefty lump to victory. And like I said in a previous video, it was the only time an, a 16-cylinder engine scored a victory in Formula 1 history.